In this episode we are going to be talking about the internal state of our components and how to handle events in those components. Intro done. First of all, we will just delete everything from the previous episode and maybe just leave our, our button component and styling object, because we will need those a bit later. Okay, so now we have button, we have our application, we have our style and we can get going. Now we are going to create a class component and call it color changer. And this is because function components can't have state. Well, I should better say function components couldn't have state in the past, but now they can via hooks. But that's a whole other episode and probably that's an actually next episode because I want to show you how hooks differ from state in functional components. So for now, let's just say that class components are the only ones that can have state, even if currently that isn't true. So we are going to call our component color changer and in it we are just going to render a div and three buttons. Now I'm just going to add some styling to our color block and then display color changer in our app. Save it and now let's check it out in the browser. Okay, so as you can see we just have this block, we have red, blue and green buttons. Let me just make this a bit bigger. Okay, this works, but what we want to do now is to take background color of color block and add it to the state of our component so that we can change that color easily. You can add state to your component inside a class constructor like this. And class components should always call the base constructor with props. So let's now add our state object. Instead of defining the background color directly in the color block div's style tag, we can define it in the state of the component and then display it in our style tag by using this state block color. Let's just save it and check it in our browser. And as you can see, nothing has changed. Okay, so this works. So now if we want to change the color of that block, we just need to change the state. And to do that, we will use React's setState function. So for example, we can add an onClick event to our red button and change the state in line, like this. So let's just save this and check it out in the browser. So if I click on the red button, as you can see, the state of our color block changes, actually the state of our component changes and uh, it changes the color of our block. However, if I click on blue, blue and green, nothing happens because we still haven't added a set state function to those buttons. So now let's just add set state functions to the blue and green buttons. Save it and let's check it out in the browser. So now if I click on red, it turns red, if I click on blue, it turns blue, and if I click on green, it turns green. Okay, so this works. Since we are now repeating this code and React is just JavaScript, uh, we can clean up our code a bit by creating a function that is going to change color of the color block depending on what parameter we send it. So this will clean up our code and we will also learn how to pass arguments to our event handlers. First, let's create our function that will handle changing of color. Since we are creating a class function, uh, we don't need to use the function keyword and we should just do it like this. As you can see, I'm passing color argument to our handle color change function. And then we now need to add logic for changing the actual color and it will be the same logic like we have in our inline buttons. Except instead of hard coding color, we will call the color argument for a mark function. And for all of this to work, we need to trigger handle color change on click of the buttons. And we also need to send the color that we want our background to change to, like this. Right, so now instead of set state and the color, we now have this handle color change red. Of course, it's not that much less of code, uh, but in bigger applications, this will come very handy because you don't want to repeat this set state function all over again. You should always just abstract it into a normal function and then use it that way and paste arguments and so on. So let's now save this and check if it works. And it does. Okay, great. 
there are a few ways to handle a Vancy React, with this experimental syntax for example, or with a bind function, but I find the way that I showed you with arrow functions is the most concise and we will be using it in the future. You can read all about different event handling methods here. Of course, onClick is not the only event that you can call, pretty much every event you have access to in vanilla JavaScript, you have access in React. The only difference is that you need to write it in camel case, just like I showed you before. And of course, you would open up curly braces after calling the event. So now, since we already have a button component, let's try to use it instead of just a normal HTML button. And let's also add the styling of the button, since our button component can't accept that styling. And we are going to make the styling be part of the state. You wouldn't usually do it this way, but what the hell, we'll do it just for the fun of it. So now we have styling in our state. Now we can pass that styling to our buttons. Great, let's save it and check it out in the browser. Okay, the styling works, but as you can see, our colors are not changing. Whenever I click on it, nothing happens. And this is because we are using our button component instead of a quote unquote real button. So we need to tell the button component how to handle that click and that is usually pretty easy. You just go to your button component and add this. So on click, this props on click. We are just passing that click as another prop. Let's just save it and check it in the browser. And as you can see, now it works. So this has been it for this episode. In the next episode, we are going to take a look at hooks and I'm going to show you how you can pretty much do the same thing that we did right here, but in a function component. Remember, this is something that wasn't available in React a few years ago. Uh, you can only change state in the class components, but as I said in the next episode, I'm going to show you how you can change the state in functional components. So anyway, uh, remember everything we did here will be available for you on GitHub, the link will be in the description below. And as always, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.